Sheffield, and this is your Art Speak Studio moment. Today I'm going to show you the process I use when I do a painting. And the painting I'm going to do is showing white pelicans on a log with reflections. All right, so this video will be a little bit longer than most of them, so we've divided it into sections. The sections will be planning the painting, master drawing, underpainting and lights, large lights, starting the midtones, refining the painting, and then the finished painting. Hope you enjoy it. This is the photograph that I took at White Rock Lake. And as you can see, we have white pelicans perched on a light struck log with very strong reflections into the water. I've cropped one part of the photograph from the rest of it. There are more pelicans down here. Um, I've made it into a vertical because I, what I'm really interested in is the white, the light struck shapes on the pelicans and the reflections in the water and the way the water takes the pelicans. So this is what I call my master drawing. And it, it is done at the same size that my painting is going to be, which is about not quite half a sheet. Um, the size of the painting is 10 by 18 and with a three inch mat all the way around, it would frame out to 16 by 24 and I'm going to call it three on a log. And I've got my three pelicans, the shapes of my three pelicans, the log, and I didn't have to do much adjusting in the shapes. But my master drawing, it's about the shapes. It's giving me shapes to paint and trying to make sure that all the shapes are interesting shapes and not necessarily predictable so that all I have to worry about when I'm doing the painting is the color. Typically, I would do a value study as well, but the values are so clear in my reference photo that I felt that it wasn't necessary in this case. Once I have my master drawing, I trace it onto watercolor paper at, so that I'll have something to paint. And I keep the master drawing for future reference in case I lose the lines when I'm doing the painting. Um, or if I should really mess up the painting, I can go back and have a good drawing already and I can just trace it again and use that as my reference. My intention in this first step, so my first step was I wanted to have a yellow underpainting up here in the corner down to here um, that would, would give some color up here. This was a very sunny day. It's close to the middle of the day. You can tell by where the shadow shapes are. And the reflection in the water is always going to be slightly darker than the objects that are being reflected. So I went in and I put some grays over where the whites are going to be in the reflection. And I was going to paint the blue over the yellow here, but, but the recording didn't work. So I'm going to do this section here just so that you can see how I apply paint. The first thing I do when I'm applying paint is mix up some paints, of course. And then I take some clear water and I wet the section as far as I think I can handle in the painting. I want to be able to have control over the paint. I want to make my paint application be interesting. I'm always thinking about how is this going to look uh, when it's finished and what is the paint going to do? Because with watercolor, it's always about your relationship with the paints and their relationship with you. So they'll do whatever they want. That's a bit dark. When I'm coming down here, I'm painting around my pelicans. I'm going to take a wet brush and let this spread a little bit so that it won't be so obvious. I'm coming around the pelican. And remember, this is all wet. I'm painting into wet paper, but it's only wet where I'm applying paint, it's not wet across the pelicans where I'm not applying paint. And my goal is to start introducing some blues in here. 
that's going to be green up there a lot. I'm going to come down here. Paint around my pelican and my log. And I'm going to let it go into my log a little bit because my log is going to be darker, but I don't want it to be obvious that I did that. So I'll get a Kleenex. Okay, now I need to not let that be so obvious. I'm going to get some darkers in here. It's not a problem here. This is going to be a shadow on this side. And bring that up so it's not quite so obvious. Lift up my extra water so it won't run back where it shouldn't. I want it to run back. I just don't want it to run back in the wrong places. I'm going to fill in inside the beak later. And I want there to be variety in the paint. So this is where, this is why it takes me so long because because once the paint's on there, then I am kind of shepherding it to go where I want it to go in the way I want it to go. I think I need to add a little yellow in there because it's not transitioning very well. That was good. I like that. So I'm trying to avoid having it be too predictable. I'm trying to avoid having shapes that will be distracting later on. So after I finished with that section that I painted, then I went ahead and painted the rest of the painting. Um, again, my I had a yellow underpainting up here. Uh, I painted down and around the pelicans. And I had to be really careful because the, this pelican is behind this pelican right here. And it's easy to lose concentration and not focus. And then I painted down here and around most of the, most of the reflection shapes. The next step, is, and you can see that I've added some little yellow in there and so forth. So the next step is to paint the midtone. So that was getting the lights and the light midtones established. Now I need to add the texture here. I need to paint the, the shadows in the pelicans, some texture in there, and I need to work down and paint the reflections. So I'm gonna show you a little bit about how I approach that. Okay, so just so you can see how I would approach this, I'm going to start with the shadows on the pelican bodies. And in order to give myself a little bit of breathing room and start my thought processes, I think I'm going to start with this pelican right here that's behind a little bit. And I'm going to put a little water in just like I did in the other places. And then I'm going to start with a little bit of blue which is awfully strong, but notice it stays where I've already wet. Now I'm going to make a nice soft edge there. And I'm going to drop in a little bit of violet just for some color change. And the pelican's bill is right there, so I'm going to drop in some orange because that's where the bill starts, it's right in there. And maybe a little bit more orange. Okay. And then the other part of the bill is down here. So I'm going to go ahead 
and do some bill. I can always dull that down if it's too bright. I think I'm going to take and put a little blue in it up here. Oops, that was too much. Lift some of that out. That might work. Okay, so we're going to leave that like that. Now I think I'll do some of that one's back. So again, I'm gonna wet in here. I'm just putting pure water on it. And I'm gonna take some of that blue So this, this blue shape, I don't want it to be blue because I don't want it to get confused with the, um, the water. It's going to come up like that. Put some soft edges in there. Put some in there just to kind of add a little variety, a little bit of, and there's a light there, Ooh. okay, let's add some color change there, doesn't have to look just like it looks in the photograph. Just has to be believable. I think I need some yellows in here. Oh, that helped. That helps a lot. Okay. And there. Okay, and then this goes into the orange on the legs. So I think I'll put a little orange in there. I'm gonna let that go a little bit. And I'm gonna add a little bit of a different blue up here. So you can see that that's already pushing that pelican out, the one in front of it, out. I'm lifting out a little bit right there. Might be too early to do that lifting. Anyway, I'm going to do the rest of the pain just like that. I've been here for three more hours and this is where I've gotten. I have um, painted the pelicans, most of the pelicans. Um, you can see there's a lot of colors in the pelicans. I'm trying to get soft edges and hard edges. I've painted a lot of the tree bark and what I've been doing with the tree bark is I put in uh, some paint that's slightly darker than what was already there. And it doesn't really matter what color it is because the tree bark is very rough and it, um, and so it, ha it has a lot of shadows. And then I drop another color in and let the paint do its own thing. Like that. So the paint is doing its own thing. I'm trying to get the difference in the texture between the feathers on the birds and the bills and the tree bark. And then I'll do the reflections in the water. OK, 
Okay, so I'm back, and here's the finished painting. And I'm going to put a little working mat on it so that you can see it without any distractions on the edges. I'm reasonably satisfied with it. I think it does what I had in mind. I think that the, the placement of the lights and darks and the shapes move the eye around the painting. This section up here with the reflection of the vegetation that is on the edge of the lake is really important for keeping you in the painting. And so I'm relatively happy. I hope you've enjoyed this little video and I hope to see you again at Art Speak Studio Moments. In the meantime, happy painting. Bye.